You have seen the Mercedes AMG GT on Autogefühl. This one here, the AMG GTS in yellow, street driving today. This one here, the GTR in green, on the racetrack. So an action-packed review with different models of the Mercedes AMG GT family. All in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with me was Thomas. Exterior, interior information and of course driving experience with this horsepower monster. Let's go in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. So all Mercedes AMG GT are covered with the so-called Panamericana front grille and some love it, some hate it. Tell me your comments. I think the car itself is just a pure beauty. Solar beam is the color. It was also used for the AMG GTC Roadster we've reviewed. If you want to see that one from the US, we were in, uh, in an area around Phoenix. Check then what out because today it's really rainy outside, therefore we are now inside to have a detailed look here also on the carbon fiber front lip. What do you think about the design with a huge star in the front? 2D however because the sensor is hidden behind it and LED headlights standard on all models. 4 meters 55 or 14 foot 9 is the total length of this sports car and we have several interesting design features. First of all here in the side profile you see how long the hood is stretched also reminding us of past great sports cars. This one here on the side is just pure decor element and interesting that in the front we have 19 inch and in the rear we have 20, 20 inch alloys so that makes the car leaning a little bit forward visually and here also with optional ceramic brakes so uh, those ones well they tend to squeak a little bit if you don't use them too hard they make more sense for the racetrack the only good thing is well they are i mean they're super expensive but the only good thing is you have to clean your alloys less often um, because there's not this typical braking dust from a normal disc brakes fun effect for sure so then of course this very strong shoulder area this is all about design and i think you know the car is even more beautiful when there are some raindrops on the silhouette here. Such a beautiful uh, area, especially right there. Or oh, what do you think? What a flat perspective also from the rear. Here also with the AMG GT and the GTS, as it is right here. It's also a small flexible wing. The GTR has a fixed one, you will soon see that. Another difference is, I mean, the rear is already very wide and also with those very slim and wide LED taillights. But then the GTC and the GTR is 5.7 centimeters wider even in the rear. That's the difference. Here also with a carbon lower lip and, well, the actual exhaust are placed inside. So this is just the decor element on the outside. And now to the centerpiece of all the models is a 4-liter V8 by turbo and you can look at it right here one man one engine handcrafted in Germany and this one here it's a GTS but it starts with a GT 476 horsepower then the GTS here 522 then the GTC 557 and the GTR with 585 and the acceleration figures drop down then and it starts with about four seconds for the GT then 3.8 and goes on to finally 3.6 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. So it's basically just the engine, engine setup, you know, for the horsepower tuning, the basic engine is the same, but prices <laughs> go up way higher. So I would always go with the basis version. It's the most comfortable for the city ride and the cheapest one actually. Of course today here with the GTS and also the GTR then on the racetrack to show you what it is capable of from the maximum racing perspective.
now to the interior, GTS key, just with the AMD badge, other than that, nothing special. Then let's open up. Ooh. So, the interior, my favorite with the microfiber cloth, and then also leatherette is being used. Great build and quality, but I mean, it's the price. I mean, it should be. Then there's the AMG. Illumination, entry, cover, right there. And then seats where there are normal sports seats, and then there are those um, even upgraded super sport seats, bucket style like. I would not go for them, they are less comfortable. If you pick the one for your everyday driving, go for the normal standard versions. However, surface wise, interesting. The GT comes with a fabric and then leatherette outside, fabric inside, leatherette outside. Then the GTS, as you see it here, with Dynamica, microfiber on the inside and Artico leatherette on the outside with the base setup. Only the GTR then features real animal skin on the outside. But in general, Mercedes sports cars are quite sustainable from this surface materials from the inside, at least standard. You yeah, don't uh, just not going for the option stand, that's important. Also, here, you know, some microfiber on the inside here and the whole steering wheel here. This one is the AMG Performance steering wheel, all in Dynamica microfiber and that's really lovely with control stitches from the inside and yeah I mean, I mean some say ah you know it wears out faster but it has so many advantages it keeps you warm and it doesn't get cold at the same time depending on summer or winter time you have good grip and everyday driving comfort i would always go for this steering wheel and i mean if i pay one of fifty thousand bucks for this vehicle and then i say oh it's really too worn off for me now i mean then just get it wrapped new for 200 euros or whatever. That shouldn't be a problem. Seating position here, as I said, really low, extremely sporty, and not good for a long time comfortable run. Then you're sure, you know, better off with a Mercedes SL. However, if you stick with the normal basic sport seats, it will be better. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. Still leave some headroom right there. And uh, that's actually quite okay. It was all basically the same in the Roadster. You can also compare that. So the interior is not simple at all. It is rather complicated and overwhelming in some way. Um, but of course, very interesting in this case. And you have those, you know, huge vents here. All very, like, say, pompous, you know, extraordinary carbon fiber cover. Strong wrap here, everything. Then the great microfiber cladding, huge middle console, again with those round knobs. I would uh, prefer it a little bit more simplistic, I would say. But then again, the elements for themselves are somehow very interesting. Again, you know, volume knob here, then you have controls, for example, for the exhaust that you can put a little bit louder. Infotainment is controlled right there with the screen here. No touch screen whatsoever, yet the climate control is still separated so you can, you know, control it right there and you also have some storage space we will soon show you that the glove box i can show you here is well pretty much non-existent same goes for the inside of the doors hardly any space in there so it's probably the least versatile mercedes there is as for the instruments you can see here the classic one left and right and then there's a digital screen on the middle part and you can have the classic mercedes view for all the, for example, GPS and stuff, but there's also special AMG view, and that is right there. And then you have some more performance and temperature graphics and G meter and whatsoever. So my favorite part of the infotainment system is here vehicle data or engine data. I mean the visualizations is really nice. You can see the angle while the wheels are turned. Also the engine data, and you can, um, you know, when you switch the ignition on. Should be pretty loud in this hall here. Whoa. There we go. And also, you can have the normal GPS, but it's a little bit complicated how everything is sorted out and also when you enter an address and so on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's dated a little bit meanwhile and I was never really satisfied with the logic of the Mercedes infotainment system. However, the visualization and the speed it is operating is quite fine. Telephone you connect via Bluetooth, that's the fastest way here and, um, you know, that's also okay. And you have this widescreen format. However, I'm not sure 
why should you keep those big frames you can just, you know, put till the end or then make the whole unit smaller, couldn't you? So, cup holders are right here underneath this carbon fiber cover, or you can also get close it. Nice surface, good building quality. You control the infotainment system here, just in detail again, and the other knobs, for example, for driving mode right there, you can switch them. I will talk about that when we drive the car. Start it here. Suspension settings, and then this AMG driving selector. Oh, isn't it cute? <laughs> you put it here in D mode, for example, and the exhaust button right there. Also, you can open the armrests, and there are two USB ports, and you can put the smartphone in there. And this is here, you know, um, in case maybe the the key is not recognized, the keyless and uh, function is not working, then you can put it there. You know, guys, I'm a Roadster or Convertible fan, but the one this disadvantage of the Roadster is hardly any luggage space. Better here with the Coupé. You can store it not as high, but you have, you know, more flexibility. Also, there's a safety net right there. You can mount that nothing flies towards the interior. And then here is a second net. Um, so this one then would usually close everything off when the trunk is closed. But then if you even want to st put stuff right there, that's the second safety net for them. Maybe a little bit complicated, but <laughs> this was obviously the only solution. So what would you put in here? Maybe your racing helmet? And now to the GTR in the rain. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful again how the raindrops form on the vast hood area here? It's just, you know, for you it's very comfortable on your, on your sofa, but not for me. But I enjoy doing it for you anyway. Well, from the front you see it's even lower, even wider, but you see the basic AMG GT look, of course. The main difference is rather in the side profile, because when you look in closely, I mean, contrast to the to the green hell color here it's really called that way this is a carbon fiber roof to bring the weight down a little bit more and then soon we will also see on the rear with this fixed wing and also we have some more drastic elements here on the side so of course even more racy the whole vehicle for sure and here it is Wow, and it is actually fixedly attached. When you want to change it, you have to manually change it. And also you can see here this 5.7 centimeter wider rear. Uh, you can see it, you know, um, just from when you have both vehicles next to each other, because the standard one also looks so wide already. And there's also something even special on the inside. We can also take a look at. And here we go. So, it's a little bit different. Those are the super bucket seats, which again, I do not really recommend because they're even less comfortable. They are really for the racetrack that they keep you tight. Other than that, not so many differences, but when you look at the middle console, there's an additional yellow button right there. And this is even because when you're in the race mode in the normal cars, there's still some traction control left. And when you then turn this yellow button, you can rule down the traction control here exclusively with the GTR even further. And now special inside you can see the V8 engine unveiled here in this cutaway model. And what's also interesting is that the center drive shaft, usually in aluminum, is here in the GTR covered with carbon fiber. And that makes it 40% lighter and stiffer at the very same time. Moving towards the rear, we have a limited slip differential for the rear axle. And here you can also see the rear axle steering. See, it can be changed in an angle now, otherwise those parts would not be there. So very interesting how this solution was solved on a technology basis. And again, it's just just some slight angles. You can you could hardly see it, but it has a massive effect on how the car is driving. Well, what a nice lineup here to show you some more different colors and vehicle variations. Here another GTS in silver, a GTC Roadster. We had this one. And this one here was the first one we had once in a review, a coupe, just a GT, the plain GT. You see, they all are, you know, have pretty much resemblance. And 
One particular vehicle I want to present you here too, and this one here is the GTC as a coupe now. So far, there was just GTC as a roadster. The GTC is basically between the S and the R, so 557 horsepower. And well, it's a little bit you know confusing that it's now always uh, now also available as the coupe, but this one has a special reason. The 50th anniversary of AMG, and this is then also a special edition with some, you know, also special design highlights, exterior and interior. Here you see in this, you know, very evil style, I would call it. What is your favorite color of the vehicles we've shown you here today? And well, what would be my pick? Of course, Thomas Blue as the exterior color. This one here is the plain GT. I would also go with the base version. It's enough horsepower for me. And of course, as the Roadster, I think the Coupe has, you know, even more elegant styling. I like it more visually, but of course, the open top beats everything. So this exact vehicle here, well, not the interior, but this exact vehicle on the exterior would be my personal pick. And then, of course, with the basic seats, fabric, Artico, mix and I would be pretty happy happy to have this one then. <laughs> and one look in the interior of the special edition right there. I think a nice work of color combinations with uh, gray and black, that's for sure. But of course, there are better seat materials available, especially at AMG. So, to normal driving, the Mercedes AMG GT, in this case here the GTS, and the 4 liter bi turbo V8 is here equipped with 522 horsepower, 3.8 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour, the acceleration, or 62 miles an hour. So, you know, we have tested the GT before as a coupe and the GTC as a roadster, and I mean, does it really make a big difference engine wise? I mean, no, it's the same engine. It always has <laughs> enormous power and it's really hard to feel a, a big difference then between those, uh, those really slight changes in acceleration. It's more how you control the car. You can have it here in the comfort mode and when you are at lower speeds, you really feel this vehicle is equipped with the rear wheel steering. So, um, or the rear axle steering. So uh, when we drive slowly, it goes in the opposite direction. And when we drive faster, it goes in the same direction to give more stability. And when you drive slowly, the car is so much more agile by that. It really feels like a go-kart, like in an Akadi racing game or something like that. Pretty surreal. And of course, when you drive the vehicle, especially in such a bright color, you look to the front, see this enormous hood, uh, you know, the same effect as with the Jaguar E-Type, for example. See this very long hood and something very emotional than when you drive the vehicle. Uh, Comfort-wise, can you drive it comfortably in normal driving life? Yeah, I mean, this is a sporty vehicle. And so there is less comfort in everyday driving if you, for example, compare it to a Mercedes SL. I think that's, you know important comparison. When we get to the motorway now, let's go to the sport mode, there's the normal sport mode, you may be here, or we more sound from the exhaust. And then, so effortless when you push the throttle, now we have like 70 to whatever, let's see what we can get. It was 130. Wow, and the sound is really great, it's not too much over the top. I think it's not too much screaming. It has this sonorous V8 sound. I think just right. So um, if you still want the car with this, with sound, I think that is uh, a good choice for sure. Wow. <laughs> that is really something. There's also unlimited speed here. Some of the rare autobahn parts in Germany where we can do that. Therefore, we can also accelerate further. And there's even a Sport Plus mode, even a gear lower now, and the gears are turned up higher. And even at higher speeds, it's, there's always something happening with the acceleration, no matter at, at which speed you are going. And especially when you're in those 
sporty driving modes, the car reacts more spontaneously. However, what you can always do is just using the shifting pedals. So um, shift the gear down yourself. That can also be fun, for sure. Like here now, and then also when you shift down, you get this plop from the exhaust. Pretty nice. Especially when you're, when you're not on the throttle. So, so you're letting the car roll. That's just going off the throttle, you know? <laughs> Let's do the plop game. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and of course, yeah, also when you uh, shift the gear up and then leave off the throttle. So um, this makes you drive this car a little bit, you'd say, not that economic, um, <laughs> to, just to induce those sounds. Um, Suspension-wise, by the way, is, is pretty good, actually. So when you, when you go back also on the motorway or not to the comfort mode, you can drive it rather comfortably from the suspension. Um, however, the seating position is very low. The stiff, the, the, the seats are very stiff. Um, and so I think the seating comfort is the main difference to the Mercedes SL. And in SL, I will also go, you know, on a longer road trip. This one here is way more challenging for, for you as a, as a driver. That's the, the big difference. However, there are also, you know, some assistance systems available, but it always depends on, for example, here in this vehicle, it's also not put on up to the max, just a normal cruise control, for example. Blind spot monitor is available via the side mirrors. I mean, sometimes people do not want all the assistance systems if they buy such a sporty vehicle. However, I think, I mean, offering them in a vehicle that is already costing so much money, I think it should all be included then. So effortless driving for sure on the motorway and you feel so connected to the road. By the way, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Um, you know, when I really sit very upright and look to the front while driving, it's like I look half into the black ceiling. So let's say it is maybe a little bit more suitable if you're a little bit smaller. <laughs> So this will be a vehicle for Michel, right? So he's, yeah, he's nodding, so maybe we should switch then positions here. <laughs> Especially in the yeah, bright yellow color. I mean, I'm not sure if I would go for this color myself, but it's definitely, you know, screaming out. Sometimes, by the way, you see in the middle part here, a small sailing boat and it's called sailing or coasting. It's just when you let the car roll and then basically the, the drivetrain is disconnected. That there's you know, no resistance from the engine. Then you roll and use less fuel. The question is if it's really important how much fuel do you use with this vehicle? I think basically it's always important. Um, and it depends on you know really how you use it. Uh, you won't really be able to score something below 10 liters on the one kilometers. Um, we can later also give you an update when we drove a little bit further, but also from the um, from the uh, results we had with our earlier test rides, you know, you will be at the fuel station quite a lot, so you can get maybe acquainted with the, with the people right there. So when we now, by the way, at higher speeds, I feel that the rear axle steering is giving me a little bit more stability. So this is also a funny feeling because you, you know the car moves like, rather like this. It's really the funny thing that although it's just, you know, just a couple of degrees in the angle where it's changing, it still has such a notable effect on driving the vehicle. I think that's the, the very exciting point about that. This was the blind spot monitor warning me also acoustically, by the way. I mean, this is here now. I feel like standing still when, we, when you're driving here with, well, what would you, we have now? Let's go back to the speed again. When you were 60 in this corner, when you would be in a small vehicle, it was like, oh, it's pretty fast. But here it's like really standing still. So moving again to the next motorway. 
So I think in the comfort mode it's really, uh, really good to drive. Also can be silent from the engine. There are also not too, you know, too many wind noises. Of course, with such a sporty vehicle, they pay attention to the wind drag. Talking about the wind drag, when we're at higher speeds, the small wing flips out automatically behind us. Um, we can also activate some functions manually. For example, with the suspension, we can put the suspension to sport and then it's really stiff. I mean, when the road is even as it is at the moment, it's not too big from a difference, but as soon as it get, gets bumpy, then it does make a difference and you do feel better with a normal, non-sporty suspension. The, the car is sporty enough. I mean, on the racetrack, it's good to have such a function, to have even more control, but here, wow. Like every lane change makes you feel you just passed another corner at, at the Nordschleife. That is really, um, well, yeah. So definitely a strong competitor to the 911, also with the you know everyday driving uh, performances. A lot of people have asked me which one is the more comfortable, 911 or this one here. I feel that this one here rather goes in a sporty direction. So. Um, from the, if you know, want to be relaxed a little bit more and more comfort, maybe the 911 has you know more everyday driving comfort than this one. If you really want to be challenged and you say, you know, I've been driven, uh, you know, I've been driving a Mercedes SL. Um, oh, we have to get off here. And yeah, with this vehicle, it's actually no problem. <clears throat> so if you're gonna say like I'm been driving a Mercedes SL for 10 years now, it's getting boring a little bit. I want to have something more challenging than. This could be suitable, as long as your lower back is still intact. So, and now going to some more city, countryside, driving, whatever. Free road, we can pass here, right? We'll leave some rubber on the ground there. <laughs> I think not, not too bad, but you felt it was, you know, <clears throat> half throttle or maybe. And still, you know, there was some cause rear wheel drive. It was a little little bit slippery, you, you could feel it already. Of course this vehicle is also equipped with a traction control and when you're in a normal comfort mode is kept relatively low. I would definitely recommend it um, for the city driving that you know so the you know the, the breaking out process is kept low, that's what I meant. Of course the ESP itself is kept high. And then when you switch over to the sport modes, then the stability control gets drawn back and you can let the car fly more. But that's rather than something again for the racetrack where you could really play that out. At the moment, it's still relatively dry. Already those countryside roads make you feel like being on the racetrack. Quite a nice road we have here for you too. So you can always enjoy the view outside. And because the suspension is um, already rather stiff, I mean, it has to be for a sporty vehicle, we can also feel the bumps in the steering wheel. And in this case, this is also desired. So the racer wants to have that, to feel more connection to the road. That again makes you feel that you would be driving a little bit more extreme or a little bit uh, faster, actually. But then again, when you have the steering wheel, and it's really a direct, control to the road and I so love the dynamic car, the microfiber surface of the steering wheel. When I'm driving slow it offers me more comfort and it's also not that cold in winter times and the same with the seating surface. Same time when I want to have a rather challenging ride like we have right now here then have a very good grip at the steering wheel and I bet Michelle also wants, wants, wants to have a good grip on the Dynamica steering wheel at the moment because of the co-driver. You don't have a steering wheel to hold on to. And then you go like flat, brom, brom, brom. <laughs> don't hold on to the camera. And then, uh, you know, that's also the reason that sometimes our cameramen will not join us in the car when we're on the racetrack because it's really insane. I mean, being co-driver on the racetrack, not really sure if I re would recommend eating before. So I'm a bad co-driver on a racetrack. I hate it. I really hate it. So <laughs> I really like to drive myself there. 
So I rather stay in the comfort mode usually most of the time because um, you know with some vehicles with some small turbo engines you say ah you know let's go into the sport mode turn up the gears a little bit more but here with the V8 with the sovereign power it sometimes feels even better you know to have the car more under control run it at a little bit lower up sorry I have to get here yeah spontaneous reactions from the vehicle right <laughs> so uh, you go with a little bit lower RPM then now to the right yeah maybe I should put the GPS information to the middle of the display here but then our viewers can't see the speed mm. and of course you have to observe me that I don't drive too fast don't you nice winding roads here right here so it's definitely a fun machine so much fun to drive I really like it that you kept, can keep the the engine at uh, you know, also at lower speeds and more comfortable and stuff that's really good and I mean the, the really screaming out stuff I'm not sure if you want to do it like every day with every ride you can do that on the racetrack um, for sure here by the way we're now with a little bit playing around 14 liters on 100 kilometers I could surely bring that down even more when I really want to Nice views to the sides. I will always li like to uh, watch the side mirrors, by the way, because they have those, you know, this artistic form as well. It's always great to look at. Here again, some slalom test. Pay attention, you know, how I turn the steering wheel and how the vehicle itself turns. And some may say the steering ratios are, let's say, rather want to feel natural, but not that direct. But here it is surely you know, among the most direct there is, which is also resulting again from the rear axle steering that is also applied, that's helping uh, that too. So now on this nice road, here's some slalom, how effortless again and you can really see uh, like a one-to-one -one translation from steering wheel to the road. So definitely a fun machine. So what can you say against it? I mean, I'm happy I have um, the Dynamica seats here. They also keep you tight that you don't swim around to the right and the left. So you're a little bit stickier than in the seat and also better for the climate comfort. Um, but again, the long-term seating comfort would be just, you know, the one thing I have a little problem with. Um, so you have to be aware of that or maybe just test it yourself sometimes it's also depending on the very exact body you have if a certain seat fits you or not and i can tell you the seats we have here do not exactly fit my comfort needs um, so this would be you know the the only drawback for this vehicle other than that surely one of the sporty fun machines and i think it's also in conclusion doesn't really matter if you have the GT, the GTS, the GTC or whatever. Um, you can always go with a lower version also. Those little bit extra horsepower, they don't really make the difference. I would rather seek a good price performance deal. They are as fun to drive as, you know, as all other versions. So here to the racing part for today with the GTR and of course it's a different thing when it's rainy. Unfortunately we couldn't have a dry spot here today on the racetrack but of course it's in a way even more exciting. And what I can already say so far here in the sport mode you can see when I hammer the throttle too much you can see I have to count the steer. I mean, oh there's there's another vehicle behind us, we're waiting for that one now. Maybe <laughs> the colleague flipped it around too much a little bit. That will be possible. I mean, it's really treacherous because there's so much rain on this racetrack, the Bilsterberg in Germany, and you have some blind spots here, for example. And I'm in sport mode, by the way, so the uh, ESP is drawn back a little bit. 
but you see with so much power and so much rain on the track it's already enough to let the car flip out just a little bit if I want to so I have to be really gentle with the throttle but of course the enormous performance we have to control it's 585 horsepower here so almost 100 horsepower more than with the basic GT model that is then of course a difference if you switch from a GT to the GTR also as we've shown and explained to you they've worked on the torsional stiffness here even more with this central shaft Whoa. <laughs> so there was just a straight line accelerating in a straight line and that even made the wheels in the rear spin and just just in the normal sport mode I mean see the ESP is drawn back in the other sport modes even more so I mean you have to be really careful here with well and the thing is when you test it here on the racetrack it shows you also something for the normal driving in in city driving you know that shows you how different it is when the road is dry and when it is wet because when it will be dry here now how we could race also if you can compare in this very video the GTS we have driven on the dry road and then here the GTR on the racetrack you know the dry part with the GTS on normal streets looks more racy than, than this one wow this is such a beast the seats here by the way I mean, yeah, not really for long-term combat, that's for sure. But here on the racetrack, they really hold you tight. And that's, of course, a good thing to have. Here you can also see the direct control of the steering wheel to the road. Nice sound supported by that. In a GTR, you feel that you would be sitting a little bit lower. You do. So that is, uh, to me, the you know uh, the basic difference. Of course, the seats are now a little bit different, um, but you know the uh, the overall feeling is pretty much similar here from the from the GTR to the, to the normal car. Of course, there has been a lot of work underneath too. And if we then compare the lap times as a professional driver, you will of course realize that. For a non-professional driver, again, yeah, I mean, even the horsepower of the normal GT can sometimes not be used entirely. And, you know, then it's of course the question, how can you use it right here? Especially not when it's rainy, you really have to control it. It's even, you know, more skill is being needed. What a view also to the front, seeing the other green hell GTR right there. Suspension of course super stiff here. This is by the way a in very interesting section of the racetrack because you basically you shoot yourself up to the sky. So remember driving this part here also with the 911 Turbo S for the very first time. That was dry at that time. And then you can really go with so much speed over there. Here also very interesting section with going over the curbs here for example. When it's wet of course it's even more dangerous because it can really slide you off. And then this big straight. And here we also got some uh, gravity cavity as you can call it. So it's happening actually right here and you get pushed down a small hill and here now down there when you are really fast you feel all the g-force putting you down so that's really interesting for sure the rear axle steering by the way is standard for the gtc which is now also available as a coupe it was just before at the road start to the gtc and gtr have the rear axle steering standard and the gts optional which is not available for the normal GT model. Also, a lot of spray then from the car from the view. And if you think about, you know, those, uh, you know, for example, Formula One drivers who are even sitting outside in the rain race, when they got this spray then in front of their side, 
how difficult it is for them actually to really drive properly. So we did have a dry racing part for today, somewhat on the street. Unfortunately, the racetrack just in the rain, but this one here, the Roadstar version, promises more sunshine, especially also in Sunbeam Yellow. And you should also check out our special review of this very vehicle with the open top from the US. That was an awesome review, really a great scenery. So after you've finished watching this one here, with a special day, go for that one. Overall, I mean, the exterior just stunning, the interior good material use and good build quality. Of course, the design is, let's say, at some point overwhelming. If you like it or not, that is left up to you. Long term run, I would rather go with, you know, a less sporty GT if you want to have longer cruises. If you want a sporty challenge, then this one is the right one for you. Of course, better price performance with the entry GT model. The other models then, of course, go up in the price really high. Just have some more horsepower, only if you then look at the lowest and the highest spec of the model lineup, then there's a big horsepower difference. But the question is, and it was also showing in the rain today, how can you get this power to the ground with just the rear wheel drive? And then, of course, 400 something horsepower are way than enough. Anyway, I hope you liked our different insight of the different models here today. I think we could present you a very nice mix. And of course, join us again next time. We're looking forward to your feedback on this very vehicle or on the vehicles for today. Thank you so much.